Hello and welcome to the CBT Nuggets ICND2 video series. My name is Jeremy Chara and I'm extremely excited to get going into this ICND part two. I don't mean to set your expectations high or anything like that, but this series is going to be awesome. It's, I'm looking, I was, I'm put, uh, look at me. I, I can't even talk. It's That's how awesome it's going to be. I just got finished recording the CCENT or ICND1, which is really good. I, I'm really happy with it. Is It is kind of an intro to networking, an introduction to Cisco. It talks about some of the key configurations of LAN switches and of routers. And, it, you know, it was a really good package. But the reason I'm so excited to get into this is because this is where the technology really you know, hits the road and starts running. I, I, I guess the best way I can describe this is, have you ever seen the movie Aladdin? It's, it's an old Disney movie, uh, it, cartoon for kids. And th there's a part in that movie where this evil sorcerer, it's near the end, this evil sorcerer kind of moves up to the next level of his power. He becomes a genie and you, you just see him explode out of this building and he goes, ah, ha, ha, the, the world is mine to control. You know, he's got this evil villain kind of voice. And not, not that I'm an evil sorcerer or anything, but that's kind of what I feel like. When I was going through ICND1 or CCNT, you know, it, it, you know, I would go through the configurations and I'd start going. It's like you, you start on a, you know, kind of a smooth jog and you're, you're going and going. And all of a sudden I'd get to a point and I'd, I'd stop. My mind would say, wait, you want to take them there? But I couldn't because that it was way beyond the scope of the ICND-1 exam. But now we can go there. It's almost like we can start with this jog, and that's what these initial videos are going to be about. I'll explain those in just a moment. Uh, and, and we can just go into this full sprint into this technology that will just blow your mind. It's awesome. So let me talk about what we're going to do as we begin this series. I'm starting off by rebuilding the small office network. It may have been some time between the CCENT series and this series for you, so I intend these first few videos to be sort of a refresher in a very practical cram session sort of way. Just about everything that we do in these videos, first few videos, are going to be all live demonstration, meaning you're going to see a network topology, and we're going to build it. We're going to be walking through configuration after configuration, and I'm going to go through and review the key LAN concepts as we're configuring them, and the key LAN configurations just to get your blood flowing again. Even if it hasn't been a while since the CCENT series, even if you just got certified, I would still say this is still good for you to go through because it's going to relay that foundation that as we get into the series, I'm going to assume we, we're all on the same page uh, and, and get us all ready to go. So what we're going to start off with is LAN concepts, meaning the switch. That's usually where most networks begin, is all the PCs and servers connecting to a local area network switch. We're going to get that switch configured and then move into the routers and, and begin configuring our internet connections and wide, wide area connections between offices. This is where we'll begin. This is our network that we're going to rebuild as we begin this series and then begin enhancing as we go through. We have three routers that we're going to be configuring in the upcoming videos. One that's connected to the internet, two of them that are between offices, essentially this over here represents one office, and then we have a WAN link over here to a, another small office over here. So we'll configure those routers, but what we're going to focus on right now is, got the orange halo right around it, the switch. We're going to work through the LAN configurations beginning with wiping out old configs. We're going to clear the switch out, get it back to its base configuration, and then begin by configuring the security, the cosmetics of the switch, meaning the name of the switch, the work environment that we're going to be working in. But we'll get management set up to, for the switch, where we can tell net to it remotely and manage it. We'll work on configuring the interfaces, hard coding speed and duplex, and assigning descriptions where we see appropriate. And then finally, we'll verify our configuration using some, many of the show commands and show CDP to make sure what we're connected to, that's Cisco Discovery Protocol, and then we'll back up our configurations to a TFTP server. So let me go ahead and slide our window in here. This is our switch that we actually used in the CCENT series. And I want to begin by eliminating everything that we did. Logon banners, passwords, everything like that. It's all wiped out when you do one of two things. One, the old way, we can type in write erase, hit enter. It says erase NVRAM 
file system will remove all configurations. We hit enter and we are good. That will wipe out the NVRAM. Now, depending on the device that you're on, the newer way is either erase, and you can do a question mark, and you can just do startup config, or some different devices, namely routers and some switches, will be delete startup config. So erase or delete, either one works, and does the same thing as the write erase. It's just write erase is considered uh, legacy. Now that kills the NVRAM. There's our concept to review. Non-volatile RAM, that's the RAM that will remain when the power goes out. But the configuration is still active on this switch in the RAM. So to truly flush it out, we need to do a reload of the switch. Now be careful. I've, I've done this plenty of times just on instinct. It comes up and says, system configuration has been modified. Do you want to save? And you think, oh, yeah, because you always save, right? But if you save, you just undid everything that you just did because it's going to write everything from RAM, meaning the stuff we're trying to erase, back to NVRAM, and it's going to boot up with its same old configuration. So I'm going to say, no, I do not want to save. And then it says, proceed with reload. Sure thing. So this will reload the switch. It's going to go through the boot process, and I'll pause the video as it does that. But once it comes back up, it will have no configuration and should give us that ever so lovely question, do you want to enter initial config dialog? So let me pause the video here. All right, we've made it through the boot process, and just to review what the boot process looks like, we right about there did the reload, and it went through, booted up. All of this pound symbols action is it copying the iOS out of Flash into RAM so it can run faster and decompressing it as it does that because it's compressed in Flash. You can see right there, uncompressed and installed. Give some uh, copyright information, yada, yada. Uh, runs through and tests all the core components. This some cryptography warnings about exporting to uh, countries that don't allow that. There's our model number of switch. This is our memory installed inside of the switch. That's our RAM. Shows the image that it's running. It's a layer 2 slash 3 image. All the controllers that are inside of it uh, that actually manage the interfaces. Uh, down below, uh, you can see system serial number and so on. But this is just some of the status messages. Now that it's up and running, we can hit enter and see, do you want to enter the initial config dialog? Now that you have graduated to the ICND2 level, we always answer no to that. <laughs> we went through it in ICND1 just to see what it looked like, but just get a few questions into that and you realize that's not where you want to be. You want to be at the command line where we can manually configure things because that's where we can do things much faster and more efficiently. So I'm sitting at the switch, little right angle bracket lets me know I'm in user mode. Now let's look at our objective. We've wiped out the configurations. Let me grab my pen here. And we are good to go on that. Uh, now we can do the passwords and banner to lock it down. Now there's a lot more to that than meets the eye. We have not just passwords for the privilege mode, but passwords for Telnet and things like that. So let's walk through it. First off, to move into privilege mode, we type in enable. Tab key finishes the command. I'll move into global configuration mode and set the most important password of all first the privilege mode password. We can do it one of two ways. We can type in enable password and whatever we want our password to be right there. I could put Cisco as my password. But the problem with the enable password command is that it stores it in the running config in clear text. Most people, if not all, use nowadays the enable secret, which will hash the password in the running config.